Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the second week of open course on diffusion in multi-component solids. This is the sixth lecture in the series and in this lecture we will start with solution thermodynamics. I will first explain the concept of thermodynamic activity and later we will derive the equation for Gibbs free energy of mixing in terms of activities of the components. Interdiffusion is a process of intermixing that drives many transformations that is uh, the transformation from non-stable state to a stable state and so it is important for us uh, for this class to understand uh, the Gibbs free energy changes associated with the process of mixing. So next couple of classes we will talk about solution thermodynamics or the process of intermixing and Gibbs free energy changes associated with it. So when we talk about uh, solutions. Uh, thermodynamic activity is an important parameter as you all know uh, the diffusion is driven down the gradient of chemical potentials or equivalently down the gradient of thermodynamic activities. So let us try to understand what is thermodynamic activity, what is the physical significance of thermodynamic activity parameter. Okay. So as you all know any condensed phase that is a solid or liquid builds up an equilibrium vapor pressure above its surface. Right? So consider for example a solid which is contained in a container, let us say this solid is a pure element A and let us say initially the chamber was evacuated. Now, a has to exert an equilibrium vapor pressure and since the chamber was evacuated, so this is a non-equilibrium state. So what happens? Some of the A atoms will go into the vapor phase, right? that will build up the vapor pressure and this process will continue until the pressure becomes equal to, this is at equilibrium at temperature T. So P0 or let us say P A0 to be precise is the equilibrium vapor pressure of A at temperature T. So the evaporation will stop when the pressure inside the chamber reaches P A0. But on the atomistic scale there is still the process of evaporation is going on, but it is countered balanced by the process of a reverse process of condensation. So what is happening uh, at the atomistic level is there is a continuous evaporation of some atoms of A from solid into the vapor phase. But at the same time some atoms are heating back on the solid surface and they are getting condensed. So at equilibrium the rate of condensation is equal to the rate of evaporation and so we do not see any net evaporation or condensation when the equilibrium is established. Right? So let us try to analyze how these rates are affected with the composition. So initially let us say the uh, rate of evaporation is REA. So how the evaporation process occurs? Basically what we are doing is plucking out an A atom from the solid surface and putting it into the vapor phase. So now all of us know that in solid the, all the atoms are in their equilibrium uh, positions, right? they are continuously vibrating about their equilibrium positions. So if, if we consider this atomic arrangement, essentially each atom is located at a what we call as potential energy well. So these are the equilibrium positions which means at this at this positions or the, at the regular lattice sides the forces are balanced there are interactions between the atoms 
but at the equilibrium positions these interactions are balanced right. So, essentially those are the minimum energy positions. So, we those are the potential energy wells. If all the atoms are identical right all the depth of this potential energy wells are same let us call it as E f. So, in order to remove one atom from the surface right there has to be some work done right. So, the atom has to gain enough energy it has to overcome this activation barrier E a and obviously, so rate of evaporation will be proportional to exponential minus E a by k t right this is the RNS equation. Now, what about the condensation? So, for condensation to occur some of the A atom have to hit on the surface and become the part of A. So, we know uh, in the vapor phase the A atoms are continuously undergoing the translational motion and some of the A atoms will hit solid A and become part of A that is the condensation process. So, essentially the rate of condensation R c of A will, uh, will be proportional to the will be proportional to vapor pressure right. So, if it is pure A it will be proportional to P A 0 because pressure is essentially the it quantifies how many uh, atoms are hitting the wall per unit time right. So, R C A we can write it as K times P A 0 and we know at equilibrium essentially the rate of evaporation is same as rate of condensation and so we can write R E A is equal to K times P A 0 let us call this equation 1. Now, suppose instead of pure A we initially uh, had a solution of A and another component B then what difference it will make? We know when A is inside solution instead of pure A. So, we need to consider the equilibrium partial vapor pressure right and obviously, the vapor pressure P A exerted by element A when it is inside the solution will be less than P A 0 right. So, now how the rate of condensation and rate of evaporation will change. Now, for evaporation evaporation of A atom can occur only from the sides of A right. So, we have to reduce the intrinsic rate of evaporation of A by the factor x A that is the mole fraction of A assuming that the concentration of the surface is same as the bulk concentration right. So, we need to apply the factor x A to the intrinsic rate of evaporation and now that will be on the other side rate of condensation will be proportional to P A because the new equilibrium partial vapor pressure is P A right. So, this is our equation 2. So, if we divide 2 by 1 what we get x A is equal to P A over P A 0 or P A is equal to x A times P A 0. Similarly, for B we can write P B is equal to X B times P B 0, where P B 0 is the equilibrium vapor pressure exerted by pure B at temperature T. So, all this we are considering at same temperature T right. So, this basically is called Raoult's law. So, if we try to plot how the uh, equilibrium partial pressure P A varies with composition let us say with x A y axis is the partial vapor pressure. So, for A if, if the x axis is x A we have x A equal to 0 obviously, at x A equal to 0 P A is equal to 0 and when x A equal to 1 our P A will be P A 0 and the Raoult's law tells me that there is a straight line there is a straight line relation. Similarly, if we plot P B 
as a function of x b, x b will be in the opposite direction. So, this axis is x b equal to 1. So, p b will be equal to p b 0 and x b equal to 0, p b will be 0. So, when the solution follows Rawls law, we say it is an ideal solution. Right? So, now there is an assumption that we have made here which we did not express earlier. What is that? See when we wrote this equation 1 and 2 right, for pure element as well as for the uh, solution, right, we are assuming R E A is same that is intrinsic rate of evaporation is not changing for A whether it is a pure A or whether it is inside a solution. Right, this can happen when the either there are no interactions between A and B or the interactions between A and B are same as between A and A or between B and B. So, the interactions are same. Okay. So, in this case the uh, we call it an ideal solution or Raultian solution. So, basically ideal solutions are characterized by no interactions between the atoms or all the interactions are same. So, let us see how the situation changes when we have the interactions between A A and B B and A B which are different. Right? So, what will happen in that case? So, suppose A B interactions are stronger than A A and B B, what will happen? If you are considering a solution of A and B, what will happen to the potential well? Obviously, there will be some A B bonds, right, which are stronger than A A bonds, and so the A atom, which is surrounded by B atom, will lie at a deeper potential energy well, right. So, basically, if we compare with this in A B solution the potential energy well for A will be deeper. So, let us call this E A prime, which means that to pluck one atom of A out of the solution more work will be required to be done as against pure A. So, obviously, the intrinsic rate of evaporation will change. Right? So, we can write this equation to for the solution case as x a times r e prime a is equal to k times p a. And we know that for this case when a b interactions are stronger than a and b b r e prime a will be less than r e of a. So, now if we divide equation 3 by 1 what we get? So, divide 3 by 1 r e prime a divided by r e a times x a is equal to p a over p a 0 or p a is equal to r e prime a by r e a times x a times p a 0. And since r e prime a is less than r e a, p a is actually less than x a times p a 0. Right? So, basically if we plot the relation between p a and x a, it will lie below the Raultian line. So, this is this will give me a what is called as negative deviation from ideality. So, if you try to plot the relation between P A and X A, obviously this is the Raoult law line. And since R e prime A 
is less than R e a, there will be a negative deviation, right. So, it will be something like this. Now, when we are considering a dilute solution, when the solution of A and B is dilute, what does that mean? That means that most of the A atoms are surrounded only by B atoms. So, most of the bonds that A is involved in are A B type of bonds, right which means R e prime is basically constant as a function of concentration as long as the concentration is very low, right. So, basically initially there will be a linear relation between P A and X A, right. So, this is called Henry's law. Now, what happens as we increase the concentration of A? with the increasing concentration of A, probability of forming A A bonds is more, right. And when there are A A bonds, since A A bonds are weaker than A B, right, the overall or it will raise the overall potential energy well, right. So, the potential energy well will be lesser and lesser deeper as X A increases, which means then there will be deviation from the Henry's law line at higher concentrations. And what happens as x a tends to 1, as x a tends to 1 again all a atoms will be mostly surrounded by only a atoms. The intrinsic rate of evaporation will be similar to the intrinsic rate of evaporation of pure a. And so, as x a tends to 1 this will follow the Rolle's law line, right. So, this is basically for negative deviation from ideality. Now, what happens if R e prime A is greater than R e of A, which means A B bonds are weaker than A A and B B bonds. With the similar logic, we can show that in that case there will be a positive deviation. Okay. So, this will be for right. this is if R e prime A is greater than R e A, that is when A B bonds are weaker than A A and B B bonds. Okay. So, now can define the quantity P A over P A 0 as A A or this is called thermodynamic activity of A, right. So, in terms of thermodynamic activity, we can state Rolle's law as A A is equal to X A, right. So, this is the Rolle's law and we can define this parameter R e prime A by R e A, we can replace by parameter gamma A, right, where gamma A is called the thermodynamic activity coefficient. Right. So, when we have dilute concentration, we know there is a linear relation between A and X A and so gamma A is constant at dilute concentration or this is the Henry's law. Okay. So, this gives us the physical significance of the term thermodynamic activity. What is it? So, basically activity is a ratio of equilibrium partial vapor pressure of A exerted by the solution to the equilibrium vapor pressure exerted by pure A at the given temperature T, right. And we know if gamma A is less than 1, right, that means A A is less than X A and this occurs when R E 
prime A is less than R E A. Right. So, the intrinsic rate of evaporation in solution is less than intrinsic rate of evaporation in pure A, which means the intrinsic evaporation tendency of A is reduced when it goes from pure state to the solution. Right. So, what is evaporation? The atom is trying to escape from the solid. Right. So, basically that defines the escaping tendency of the component in this case A. Right. If activity A A is less than X A that denotes negative deviation which means the intrinsic escaping tendency of A is reduced by going into the solution. On the other hand if we have A A greater than X A right, in that case the intrinsic escaping tendency of A increases by going into the solution. We are comparing the interesting escaping tendency in solution with that in the pure state. Right? So, basically here this pure state we are taking as a reference state or it is called the standard state. Okay? So, this is the significance of thermodynamic activity. Now, when we are analyzing the uh, intermixing process or the process of mixing, we need to see what are the Gibbs free energy changes associated with it. So, that we can decide the equilibrium or stability uh, criteria based upon that. Right? So, we will see how the Gibbs free energy changes are calculated for the mixing process. Before that, uh, it is first important to define the contribution from individual element to the total property of the system. For example, Gibbs free energy or volume basically the extensive property. right? So, the contribution per mole from the individual component to the total property of the system is referred to as partial molar quantity. Partial molar property is denoted by Q i bar and it is defined as partial of Q prime with respect to number of moles of N i at constant temperature pressure and constant number of moles of other components. So, this is basically the change in property Q prime by the addition of one mole of I when we keep temperature pressure and other numbers of moles constant. Again, this has to be done at constant composition, right? Because then Q i bar will also change with composition. So when we add this one mole to the system to define Q i bar, it has to be added to a large amount of the system. So that addition of one mole of i does not change the composition significantly. Okay. So now we know then q, q prime is a function of temperature, pressure and number of moles of all the species. So, let us consider n uh, component system and q prime basically is a state function, q is a state function. right? So, it has a exact differential. So, at constant temperature and pressure we can define its differential as d q prime is equal to do q prime by do n i at constant temperature pressure in j not equal to i d n i plus do q prime by do n j at constant temperature pressure I not equal to J, D and J and so on. And we can see these partials are nothing but the partial molar quantities. So, D Q prime is nothing but Q i bar D and i plus Q j bar D and j and so on. So, let us denote this by equation 1. As I said, a partial molar uh, property 
is basically the contribution per mole of species i to the total property q prime. Right? So, we can mention q prime as n i q i bar plus n j q j bar and so on. So, if we take a differential of this, we get q i bar d n i plus q j bar d n j plus plus n i d q i bar plus n j d q j bar and so on. Let us denote this by equation 2. And if we compare equation 1 with equation 2, we see that n i d q i bar plus n j d q j bar and so on should be equal to 0. Or if we divide this equation by the total number of moles of the system, then we can write x i where x i is the mole fraction of i d q i bar plus x j d q j bar and so on equal to 0. Right? So, both these equations are equivalent and they are called Gibbs Duham equation. So, these are very important equations, uh, the Gibbs Duham equation will be very important for our class, we will keep using it as we go along, but what is the physical significance of this? It essentially tells me that this not all partial molar quantities are independent. Right. Practically, why it is important? Because many times we find that uh, it is possible to, uh, if for example, if we are considering a binary system, it is possible to measure the proper the property of only one component. Measuring property of second component is not practical. Many times it happens. Right. But this equation tells me that that is ok. If I can measure the property of one component as a function of composition, then from the Gibbs Duham equation I can get to the other property. So, that is the physical significance of this Gibbs Duham equation. Okay. And this is very important. For example, we will often talk about molar volumes when we study the diffusion, because the analysis of diffusion profiles is considerably affected by the changes in molar volumes. right? So, the volume is one extensive property. So, obviously, we have a partial molar volume which is the contribution per mole by individual species to the total uh, volume of the system. So, in terms of mole fractions, we can write molar volume as x i v i bar plus x j v j bar and so on, where v i bar v j bar are the partial molar volumes. Right? And we can write the Gibbs Duham equation as, we can write in terms of summation x i d v i bar equal to 0. Similarly, if we consider Gibbs free energy, molar Gibbs free energy, we can write g as x i g i bar plus x j g j bar and so on, where by the definition of partial molar quantities g i bar is defined as do g prime by do n i at constant temperature, pressure and constant number of moles of other species. this looks familiar. So, this is equivalent to the chemical potential. Right. So, the partial molar Gibbs free energy of I in the solution is same as its chemical potential mu I in the solution. Right. So, we can write the Gibbs Duham equation for chemical potentials as x i d mu i equal to 0. 
right. So, these two equations are very important, we will use them in the later part of the class, okay. So, now how do we analyze the Gibbs free energy changes associated with the mixing process, right. So, if we mix A and B to form a solution, what is the Gibbs free energy change associated with it, right. So, we let us carry out that mixing process systematically. Suppose initially we take x a moles of a and x b moles of b right and we form 1 mole of solution right. So, what will be the initial uh, Gibbs free energy of the system let us call it g 1 x a g a 0 plus x b g b 0, where g a 0 and g b 0 are the molar Gibbs free energies of a and b, right. What will be the Gibbs free energy after formation of solution? So, let us call this g solution, right. In terms of partial molar Gibbs free energy, it will be x a g a bar plus x b g b bar. Right. So, the Gibbs free energy associated with the mixing process, more specifically this is molar Gibbs free energy, because we are forming one mole of solution from x a moles of a and x b moles of b. That will be delta g mix g solution the final Gibbs free energy minus initial Gibbs free energy and if from these two equations we can write it as x a times g a bar minus g a 0 plus x b times g b bar minus g b 0. What is this quantity? g a bar minus g a 0. So, it is the basically the change in Gibbs free energy associated with A when it goes from pure state into the solution. So, this is we can call as delta g m a bar or partial molar Gibbs free energy of mixing of A. Right. So, we can write delta G mix as x A delta G m A bar plus x B delta G m B bar. Now, we need to evaluate delta G m A bar and delta G m B bar. So, let us see what happens to the individual species form a solution from the pure state. Right? So, what we are doing if we consider A, we are taking x a moles of A from pure A right, and putting it into a solution. right? Now, when I had pure A, the partial pressure exerted by A was P A 0 when I have A in solution partial pressure uh, exerted by A is P A. So, essentially we are changing the vapor pressure of A from P A 0 to P A. Right. So, this solution process can be considered as is uh, composed of essentially three steps. Right. So, consider the first step is So, consider evaporation of 1 mole of A at temperature T. So, suppose pure A is at equilibrium, we evaporate 1 mole of A at constant temperature pressure from solid state to the vapor state. Then reduce the 
pressure of A from P A 0 to P A and then third step as condense the one mole of A into the solution right, at P A in temperature T. So, this step 1 and 3 are essentially the reversible processes right, evaporation of 1 mole of A at T and P A 0 is reversible similarly step 3 is reversible, but step 2 is an irreversible process. So, there will be the Gibbs free energy change associated with step 2 right. Now, this we can replace with a reversible process and find out what is the Gibbs free energy change associated with it. So, essentially we are trying to see what is d g, we know it should be equal to minus s d t plus v d p and at constant temperature you know d g is equal to v d p. Now, if we consider ideal gas, we are considering vapors right and the vapor pressures are uh, typically really low pressures right and we know at low pressure we can uh, consider a gas a real gas as close to an ideal gas right. So, we can apply the ideal gas equation here. So, we can replace V with R T by P. So, if you make a state change from pressure 1 to pressure 2 you know delta G should be equal to R T at constant temperature delta G should be equal to R T L n P 2 by P 1 right. So, in this case when we carry out these three steps that delta G is equivalent to delta G A bar m right and we are changing the pressure from P A 0 to P A. So, delta G m A bar is R T L n P A over P A 0 and P A over P A 0 is nothing but thermodynamic activity of A. So, this is equivalent to R T L n A A right. So, the Gibbs free energy of mixing you know should be equal to X A R T L n A A plus X B R T L n a B. In general for an incomponent system we can write the molar Gibbs free energy of mixing should be equal to sigma i for n components will be equal to R t is constant x i l n a i or delta g m i bar is equal to R T L n A i. Now, we know delta G m i bar was G i bar minus G i 0. So, this we can also write as G i bar is equal to G i 0 plus R T L n A i. Again this equation you are all you all are familiar with I suppose, because G i bar is nothing but mu i. So, we can write this as mu i equal to mu i 0 plus R T L n A i. Okay. So, now we know the Gibbs free energy change associated with mixing process or when we form a solution from pure components what should be delta G mix. And this is the standard equation for chemical potentials that we will be using mu i equal to mu i 0 plus R T L n A i. So, in this case mu i 0 is nothing but the chemical potential of i in its standard state right. You can define any state as standard state. In this case our standard state was pure i more specifically the standard state conventionally is defined as pure component i 
in its stable state at the temperature being considered. Okay. So, uh, essentially the solution thermodynamics boils down to the study of temperature, composition, vapor pressure interrelationship, right. Because we uh, studied when we form the solution how the pressure of uh, vapor above the surface of the solid or liquid the condensed phase basically changes. Right, and this vapor pressure will of course be a uh, function of temperature, and the vapor pressure intrinsic rate of evaporation also changes with composition. So the solution thermodynamics essentially deals with interrelationship between temperature, composition, and vapor pressure. Okay. <coughs>